Hey guys, it's Jules, back for part two of our Breath of the Wild um, playthrough. So last time we finished the Great Plateau, which is somewhere behind us, and we also got a Pona here. Um, I'm actually kind of unsure whether she's gonna hang around while we do the shrine, because she's kind of, kind of wandering around. So I think we're gonna register her first at the stable, and then we'll come back to do the shrine before we uh, head towards Kakariko Village. And there's a shrine here that we're gonna get as well. There's usually shrines next to the stables. I think there's a shrine next to every stable except for Rito Stable because it's right next to Rito Village. Riverside Stable. Whoops. Oh my gosh. I might have been going too fast there. Oh. I do know about the stable system. Yeah. All right, if you've come with a wild horse, you can register it here. Or if you want to stay for a rest, head to the counter inside. So we're registering Epona. Um, we won't be able to change her name. So yeah, so as you can see, she's got four stars in everything. Um, later on, I will be looking for a five star horse because it's really hard to beat. Mm. Oh my gosh, I don't even have rupees. Oh. All right. <laughs> That's my bad. I may have completely forgotten that you need rupees to do this. Hey! Name is Beetle, but you can call me... Actually, let's just stick with Beetle. So, Beetle, of course, I recognize from Skyward Sword, mostly. He's a pretty fun little character. Even if you forget my face, you can remember me by my beetle-shaped backpack. Wow! Despite these dangerous times, you'll find me traveling all over Hyrule to fulfill your shopping needs. Stock many special bugs and must have items for travelers, and I always charge a fair price. Or my name is not Beetle. He's so cute. <laughs> I also buy all sorts of things, so if you're in need of rupees, gemstones in particular fetch a high price. And that runs true for all of the uh, merchants in the game. So he's asking how we, uh, how we can help him, so we're going to oh. show him what we've got. So as you can see, everything in our inventory automatically has a price. Um, we'll just sell a couple of these for now. And that will be enough to uh, to register our horse. So the bladed rhino beetle that we have in our inventory, if I talk to him again, whoa, if I talk to him again, um, he's probably going to be like, whoa, a bladed rhino beetle, and offer to trade it to me for some sort of a meat and rice dish, Ooh. which is definitely a better deal than selling it for four rupees. All right, let's try this again. So yeah, so usually he will ask you to enter a name for your horse. Oh. Isn't this Epona, the horse of legend? Mm. What are you thinking? You can't rename a horse of legend. Pretty sure there's a law against that. So Epona it is. Okay. Um, and I'm not sure there if you can actually choose change it and then change it, but I'm not going to do that. Come on. Uh, would you like to take your new horse with you? Take horse. Oh. So if I didn't want to, mm. I could board her here. And then I could magically uh, retrieve her from any stable, despite him telling me that horses aren't magic. Apparently the stables are magic. So it's really convenient, though. It would honestly be awful if you couldn't take them out from any stable you find. So metal connections. I remember this one. A little bit time consuming, but mostly easy. There's some amber to make up for the stuff we lost. So we need to get that uh, slate over there. And we're gonna use magnesis. And just slowly pull these boxes over because I hate having to restack them all together. Oh, it looks like I'm gonna have to anyway. They're already like falling apart. It's chill. Uh, here. So this is gonna act as a bridge to get over to the monk. Just 
move it out of the way so we've got some room. Grab these guys. Pull them over nice and slow. So we're a little closer. Uh, that should do it. Yeah, that might actually be too close. They don't have to be stacked perfectly. You can still climb them pretty well. Reach this, pull it up. Whoops. And then we're gonna kind of push it. So here's Epona, she's looking a lot better now, she's got her saddle, and I think she gets, yeah, she gets a special bridle and saddle with the Hylian crest there that you can see. Um, a regular horse in the game will not have that. They will have kind of like the saddle bridle. So we're heading back to Proxim Bridge. We'll do the shrine that's right there. Maybe we'll fight a Moblin first, just for fun. Whoops. Do not have the stamina I used to have, that's for sure. Oh, that wasn't too bad. steal his club and I can see the tower we need to get to is over there so that's where we're going after we take yeah. out the shrine now we're gonna take down these guys because they have a free chest for us but we're gonna do it with fire arrows now that is just always so satisfying only issue is that their body parts will burn as well so if you want to pick stuff up, you kind of have to be quick about it. I realized in my last playthrough, I actually did completely forget to pick up some chests. And uh, that's my bad. So sorry to anyone who was like, what are you doing while they were watching? Because, oh, that's nice, soldier's bow. Because yeah, I was obviously a bit distracted. At the same time, though, I kind of wanted to get through the Great Plateau fast. Just feel like there wasn't much point doing um, two videos for a tutorial of the game, which is what it is, so. <laughs> okay, so this is the Bosch Kala Shrine. For most people, I guess this would be the first one that you run into once you've left the Great Plateau. Assuming you head to Kakariko Village. I don't know what happens if you just completely disregard King Rome's orders and head towards, like, Gerudo Desert or something, first thing. Um, I'm assuming it's fine. You're just missing out on the memories and obviously the final quote-unquote true ending of the game. Okay, so I guess this one is kind of a paraglider lesson. Which makes sense, again, if it's the first shrine you run into. 
And therefore, the first shrine that doesn't give you another rune, the rest of them won't. It'll just be chests, if you can grab them, and spirit orbs, which are definitely worth it. Now, the chest in this one, I'm pretty sure we just get to by paragliding from here. Except I thought I tried that once, and I didn't make it. <laughs> so, I'm a little tentative about whether or not I want to give that a shot. I have a feeling you actually need to use the, um, the wind gust there. So, we're going to give that a shot instead. Because if it's there, we may as well grab it. Yeah, so I think that starts you out a bit higher up. And that's a pretty nice sword to pick up, so... Worth it. I don't really like the two-handed swords that much. Um, I do prefer them when I'm fighting something like a Lionel, because as long as you're dodging, you don't need your shield. And you're only using flurries, so it doesn't matter that you're using a uh, slower weapon. But if I'm fighting like a group of Bokoblins, I definitely would not want to be using a claymore or a boulder breaker. I'd rather have a broadsword so you can move faster. So I guess stealth is going to be harder in um in hard mode when the DLC comes out, which means I'm pretty sure everyone is going to be wearing the Kakariko set of clothes, the Shika clothes, um, which I unfortunately didn't really appreciate during my first playthrough. I kind of ignored them because I didn't have enough rupees, and I finally came back and got them just kind of because, but I realized I should have had them way sooner because they're nice and streamlined, and I don't know if you actually move faster while you're wearing them, but it sure feels like it. So, we do want to get to that tower. I think we're going to have to actually go back around. Um, unless we want to leave Epona here, which we don't want to do. Yeah. We'll just take her this way. Oops, not into the tree. And uh, we'll leave her on the riverside while we go over to the tower. Yeah. One thing I have noticed in this game, and I'm not sure if it's just part of the overworld music, is these little, like, chimes that happen now and again. And it's not piano, it's like a bling. Next time um, I hear one, I'll let you know. I have a feeling it might be to, um, whoops, to show that there's a Korok nearby. But I actually have no idea. <laughs> the game doesn't explain it at all, so I'm actually not sure if it's just me or what. Oh, there's a Korok right here. Alright, so Epona should be safe right here. There's an enemy camp there, obviously, but that's no big deal. Oh, here we go. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna make me swim, isn't it? Alright. Not too far of a distance, but the water's moving the opposite direction. Koroks are just little dicks, obviously. Maybe it's just showing me the uh, fastest way across the river. I guess it does the trick. So these guys are kind of nice in that everything just takes one hit. And you can pick up their arms and use them as weapons, but they have really low durability, so we're not going to bother there. Again, reasons why I really like the spears for just traveling through the countryside. I would rather use a sword for vocal blims. Um, but if it's like Keese and those like skeleton guys, the spear is perfect. So here we go. Dueling Peaks Tower. We don't have this one on our slate yet, so we have to climb. And again, I'm still not used to not having all the stamina in the world. So if you don't jump, it is more efficient for your stamina wheel. So if you know that you have a hard climb ahead and you're not sure if you're going to make it, do not jump because it does use less of your stamina wheel. It's not just to make it faster. 
Sorry, it does use more of your stamina wheel to jump. feel as tall and I think it's because it's right next to the dueling peaks which are massive there's also a shrine on each of the dueling peaks at the top uh, one of which has the climbers bandana which is a great um, armor set but I'm not actually sure if we'd be able to make the climb to either of those right now with our stamina as it is Okay, so this is Neklura. I think Central Hyrule is where the stable we went to is. As you can see, it's just outside of Neklura's uh, range. So the Sheikah sensor um, chimes kind of when you're near shrines. And it has a bit of an incredible range, which I guess you could see as a feature. But personally, I find it super annoying to have it chiming all the time. So we're gonna shut it off. And then we're gonna head back to Epona, who is down there. But not before we, uh... let's see, I don't know if I could make it up there. Maybe I could. There's lots of ledges that kind of help you along the way. Oh, there's a shooting star. Okay, well, I don't think I would make it because I'd have to climb this cliff right here. And I don't think you can exactly get around the other side. Uh, but I'm really curious, so let's give it a try. It's too late now. Worst comes to worst, I have some stamina food items in my bag that we cooked earlier. When you're climbing and when you're on a feature like this, or um, Mount Laneru or Death Mountain, you really get an idea for how small Link is. Um, and like most video games, of course, it does grant him like some privileges that we wouldn't have if we were like actual humans climbing a mountain. All of this would be so much bigger than we are. But it does a good job of giving you the illusion that it's to scale. So there's a couple little cliffs here that we can use to our advantage, which is nice. So we might actually make it up to the shrine on the Twin Peaks. And I still have the pattern in my phone from when I first went through. So we're not gonna do the back and forth like you usually have to do with Twin Peaks. Uh, we're just gonna, I just know what the pattern is already. Oh, okay. So I never actually ran into this guy in my first playthrough, clearly. It's a senior. I never ran into a senior on my first playthrough, actually, either. Let's see uh, how fast we can take him down. Not fast. But we have bomb arrows, and this Moblin Club might last a good amount of time, so... We'll see how it goes. And it will give us a good amount of um, gems that might actually allow us to buy the Kakariko armor right away, which would be really nice. Shit. And I missed again. There we go. So that did a ton of damage right there. We could probably just use bomb arrows, but I don't have that many. So, rather we hit at him with the Moblin Club whenever we can. Oh my god, the axe does so much less damage. Oh well, it's something. And he hasn't shot us off just yet. I think he tried and I think we <laughs> got back on, which is great. And there we go. God, the roll physics in this game, honestly. I really don't want to die here, so we're gonna preemptively eat some seared steak. Yeah, so this should be all it takes. 
When I first found the talus that's on Great Plateau, I honestly almost shit my pants. I was so scared and I had no clue how to fight it. I think I eventually won, um, but dear god, it probably took forever. So there's a ruby that's great. Flint obviously is really useful for when we start um, wanting to make fires. He didn't actually drop as much as I would have liked, unless it all like rolled down the hill. Which would be pretty disappointing, but what can you do? Um, and I don't know if this is necessarily a spoiler, but if you defeat all 40 stone taluses in the, uh, in the overworld, you get a medal. That's it. Nothing like super special, but if you want to see this page of your inventory full up, that's what you gotta do. 40 taluses. 40 Lynels, and 4 uh, Moldugas found in the desert, which honestly are some of the most fun enemies to fight in this game. So that one I would do just for, just for funsies. So maybe this is the path we were supposed to take, not sure on that one. When I did this shrine originally, I went straight up the cliffside because I had all of my stamina and I thought why not. But it looks like we found someone's old abode here, so that's kind of interesting. Choo choo jelly. Yep. Blow these up. Um, and there's a chest. Good. Okay, so that sledgehammer would have been perfect for taking out that talus, but what can you do? So cool, Safina is great to pick up now, especially if we want to do um, Death Mountain next. Do I seriously not have any apples? Is there an apple tree here? Yeah, okay, good. I cooked them all, didn't I? Probably. So, this is a Korok. I found these because... I didn't think it was like a thing. I thought I was just being like a good person and giving the other statue an apple. And then I was like, oh, it's actually just Korox. Not some great spiritual thing that I'm doing for Hyrule, but I guess maybe at the same time. Oh, I thought there'd be bird's eggs up there. Oh, missed that guy, okay. All right, let's focus here. So as someone who's hiked to the top of mountains before, I wish it was this easy. <laughs> but something like this um, would be all boulders, and it would be hell. Uh, that's all I have to say about that. Like, no doubt it would be fun. This would be a fun mountain to climb, but... God, I'd be on all fours way earlier. And there's some birds up there. Oh shit. I thought I would be able to stand up here. So we're gonna eat this. And that should get us to where we can stand and wait and recharge. Yeah, there we go. Whoa, I do not need to blow that bird to the marines. So there's the other shrine across from us. The one we want is going to be a little bit of a drop down actually. It seems that we came all the way to the top and we didn't have to be. Oh wait, I think it's over there a little bit more. So these are kind of fun. I don't know why necessarily they put these here if not just so you can like send them rolling for shits and giggles. I don't know if what they would actually take out <laughs> down below but I don't even think we can watch if we wanted to. Yeah, it just goes. Maybe it's gonna land on the merchant or something. So there's our shrine. We're gonna go up and then down because that's most efficient. And this one will give us the climber's bandana. And then we'll get the climber's shirt in a major test of strength. Which uh, is literally awful, but what can you do?
So this is one of the twin peak shrines. So what you're supposed to do is it's kind of like a memory game. So you climb up uh, up there and then you look down on here, you write it down or you remember it or something and then you go to the other shrine across the dueling peaks and you input that pattern. But we're not gonna do that because I've already done that in one game and it's pretty time consuming. It would be even more time consuming with the amount of stamina that we have. So we're going to kind of cheat from the pictures that I took when I first played. Cool shrine idea though. I thought it might actually be like a memory game like with the cards. I thought that would be kind of fun, but this is kind of cool too. And then I might be wrong about the climber's bandana. That might actually be the next shrine redo. Not across the Twin Peaks, but um, kind of underneath it. We can take a Pona over there. Was I crazy about there being a chest here? Yeah, apparently. Did I miss it? Is it back in there somewhere? No, nope, doesn't look like it. All right. At least it's another spirit orb. So again, uh, there's another example of the monks all kind of looking different. Okay. So with that done, we can finally go back down to where Epona is. We can't even see her anymore, but I know she's down there. she is. So we'll just land down here and we'll call her over. And if you- oh. She's having some troubles here. I don't know what she's doing in the water. Okay, we got Oxyrox firing at us, but that's fine. They can do that all they like. We can take them out. So, we're gonna drop a Pona right here. I don't want those Lizalfos going after her. They are all mine. Oh, it didn't do anything. Oh, that's interesting. You're okay? Probably. Yeah. Not too bad. We'll get armor in Zora's domain. That will let us swim a little faster. This must be the shrine with the climber's bandana. And it makes Link look like a bit of a... I don't know how to say this nicely. It makes him look like a bit of a hick. But that's alright. I guess he's allowed. Okay, so this is the timing is critical um, shrine. Which is relatively easy to comprehend and easy to do. It just takes like a little bit of time because you have to wait for these to move and then you have to. You just have to go through all the motions.
guess this one is really the only like actual challenge is that one right there and it's still not that hard so that's fun oh shit okay try not to fall off the map there so to get this chest we have to use this barrel and put it down on this button carefully Oh, God. It scares the crap out of me every time. So, there's our climber's bandana. We don't have a headpiece yet, so we're gonna put it on. Um, Link looks like... Uh, I don't know, like my unemployed uncle a little bit, but we won't talk about that. Push the barrel out of the way, and then wait some more. Us and our bandana and our one doublet. Bad armor. We'll look better soon. So, alright, so we already have four spirit orbs, but we're gonna get one more in a minute here. Anyway, just a bunch of shrines in a row before we head to Kakariko. And there's one more shrine we can do there, and one that we can do later later if we decide to. Requires a bunch of quests to be finished before you can even start that one. There's a few quests in the game that are like that. Um, probably the best hidden quests in Breath of the Wild are those ones. Okay. Took me a while to figure out. Anyway, so... Alright, off we go. Dueling Peaks table is right around the uh, corner here of the Dueling Peaks. And over there, that tower, the really tall one, is um, Hatino Tower. So we're gonna stop and head up this ladder here. There's a chest at the top, and it gives us a good view. So there's Dueling Peak Stable, there's the shrine we're gonna complete, and there's Ash Plains. There's horses here that tend to be some of the first ones you get in the game. There is a treasure way up there, and there's a monster in here that you can only fight at night. That's a Stallnox. So we are going to drop this torch in favor for this rusty broadsword. And this box, we're gonna just blow open. So it's not a chest. I don't know why I thought it was a chest, but it's something. So we'll just hop right back onto a pony here. Oh, why not? It's cool too. There's Beetle again. talk to him. He's gonna be really impressed by our beetle. Wow. So he's giving us a mighty elixir, which again is a lot more worth the four rupees that we would have gotten for just selling the beetle to him. And let's see what he's got for sale. He has arrows, so we're gonna buy... Um, gosh, we don't have a lot of rupees. We'll buy one of these. Because we can always use them. And that's it. <laughs> we don't have to sell anything yet. Did I knock him on the ground? Well, I don't know. So there's a couple different ways you can um, get into this shrine. I used fire arrows the first time, and like, or a torch or something, and burned it all, but that's just not really necessary if you can just cry on us above it. And this one is a cryonis test. Here we go. So 
Thankfully, Cryonis is something you can <laughs> climb on. I don't actually know what you would do if you couldn't. And it's kind of like a weird pachinko game. You have to make the ball go where you want it to go, which is down there. It's all color-coded for your convenience. There's a couple ways to make this work. Again, you can only make a maximum of three Cryonis blocks at a time. So the two that I built already just disappeared as I did that. But we're going to go back for the chest after. There we go. And that'll go in here. We're going to get a little notification, like a job. There we go. So again, um, oh, that's nice. So in one of the first uh, shrines that you do, you, you grab the chest with Magnesis. The chest that I just grabbed there, we wouldn't be able to use Magnesis on. It's built of stone. So you have to use Cryonis to get to that. That's the idea. Okay, back in Kakariko Village. <laughs> you can see the shrine way up there. I'm not actually even sure what that is. Oh, it must be the other uh, Dueling Peaks shrine. That's pretty funny. At night, they're really easy to see, obviously. <laughs> So, we're gonna go down to Hatino Village, and, uh, yeah, the best way to get there pretty much is to go back the way we came, and then we just go, uh, up here, past Blatchery Plain, to Hatino. Which is a bit bigger of a village than Kakariko, but not by much. Let's see if we can grab some more fireflies while we're out and about. I feel like I probably took all the ones already. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's any more spawning here. There's one. Oh, there's some. Whether I can get them or not is another story. So the girl that asks for these says that she wants them to help cope with the pain. Which just sounds really extra depressing. I don't know what sort of pain she's going through. Maybe uh, her voice hurts because she's always yelling at people. Maybe she's depressed. Um, it's kind of tough to say, but it's kind of sad. There's a lot of sad things in this game that kind of come up casually and you're like, oh gosh, like, you know, I don't know how else to put it. So we need one more. We're gonna try and get the one that's up there. Cause the other one is really high up. Oh, did I scare him off already? Uh, oh. See, some of them are just like little green bulbs and not actually fireflies. That tends to happen with some of the insects in this game. More than a few of them, to be honest. Dragonflies, same thing. You think you see like five of them, and then you actually get there, and it's like two or one. Um, mm hmm. So, I don't actually know where we're gonna find the last firefly. Uh, we'll just do it when we come back to Kakariko. What is in there? Oh, sparkling. Oh, an apple. Okay, well. That's fine. 3 a.m. is as good a time as any to head out of town. And it's much faster moving since we have a Pona here. Kind of have to be careful when you get a horse in this game, though, because it's also a very easy way to miss things. Because you're moving so fast, and you just kind of want to get to your next destination, but... The whole point of the game is exploring. I'd say they did a pretty good job, though, of including areas where you can't use the horse. You have to go on foot. 
I mean, climbing is an example, but there's others as well. So there's the Dueling Peaks stable way down there. Just to kind of get your bearings here. We're going to go back down across the bridge and then head uh, upwards. Oh, who is this? Is this the same girl? Yeah, it's the same girl that likes her gemstones. So the little chime that you heard there, that's kind of the chime I was talking about. This guy... Okay, he's just giving us directions. And he's selling some things. Let's see. Energetic rhino beetle. Greatly restore stamina. Okay, so it's all... It's all items that can help restore stamina. Uh, which is pretty interesting. And pretty useful. But we don't need it right now. We can find our own later on. Okay, this... This buddy with his stupid hat... This is who I want you guys to see. Oh. Asking us, okay. I can tell you've trained your body well, I'd say. You're familiar with both sword and bow, correct? That's a good skill set. Why don't you join the Yiga clan? So we've already heard about the Yiga clan. They pledge their um, allegiance to Ganon. So we're going to say that we'll pass. Oh. And then he says, what? You're refusing. Why don't you at least hear what I got to say first? The Yiga clan, it's... <laughs> a powerful, brave group of warriors founded by Master Koga and dedicated to defeating a hero thought long dead. Mm. I will take your life! <laughs> so, all of the Yigas are really easy to spot because they're just called travelers. They don't have names like all of the other NPCs. <laughs> and, uh, it's, they're kind of like 0 to 100 really fast. <laughs> like, they'll be like, oh man, I could go for some salmon. Or I could kill you! <laughs> Oops, sorry, opponent. And you're just like, oh shit! And then they just, like, get into it. Later in the game, they don't bother disguising themselves. They, uh, they just show up and start trying to, like, kill you. On the plus side, they always drop some mighty bananas. <laughs> and some rupees. So, it kind of makes the fight worth it. Especially in these, uh, early parts of the game where you're short for cash. God, I swear to God. Come on. There we go. So, here's the fork in the road. Make a turn, and up we go. First thing we're gonna do is head towards Hatino Tower there. Is that a choo-choo? Yeah. Because there's no point going to Hatino if we don't even see ourselves on the map yet. And it's not um, a hard tower to climb. It doesn't have much of a challenge. Oh, is that Petal? No, Merchant. So you can tell right away when you're playing that this was some sort of a war zone. There's enemies all over the place. There's dead guardians, thankfully. Dead guardians. All over the place. Um, and this is Fort Hatino. Oh, I got the enemy music here. And there's a guy that likes to hang around here and he will talk to you about it. Um, it's almost, this guy, it's almost kind of presented as like a tourist spot. Whoops, is he asleep or something? Yeah. <laughs> I was praying for the souls of the warrior and all who died here at Fort Hatino. That's a totally different thing than sleeping. You're welcome to join me if you want. Sure. That's a pretty enlightened thing to say for such a young kid. So all I said was sure. Fort Hatino here was the last line of defense between Hatino Village and the terrible tragedy all those years ago. If not for this fort and the soldiers who held the line here, Hyrule as we know it might be gone entirely. It's our duty as the survivors to pray that those who give their lives find peace and to pass on the story of the warrior. Ah. So, yeah, he's observing a moment of silence. He doesn't want to talk. That's fine. He really just wants to go back to bed because he wants to sleep in. Uh, so whatever. So there's a lot of bees and honey here that you can um, deal with if you want to. And there's this dude. Ha, ah, let me guess. You caught wind of the great Dr. Callop's groundbreaking research and just had to meet him for yourself. No, don't don't tell me you've never even heard of me after I've dedicated my life to researching these ancient shrines. Oh, well, you better remember my name, for it's not the last you'll hear of it. And while I'm at it, it's Dr. Callop. If you please, I didn't study my rear end off to be called Mr. Callop. Everyone forgets I'm a doctor for some reason. And since you asked, I'll inform you that I'm engaged in analyzing ancient texts. I haven't time for idle chit-chat. 
Soon my long years of research will be revealed, and all the world will hail it as the discovery of a century. To prevent any undue attention, I haven't even told my family about my work. You understand, I'm sure. Of course, Dr. Caleb. Oh. Did I just hear you call me doctor? As in, not merely Caleb, but Dr. Caleb? It rolled off your tongue so naturally. It was downright salivary. Gross. Gross, 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 gross. Hmm, this changes things. Very well, then. I'm feeling charitable, so I'll let a few things spill. This is just between us, understand? When a dark light resides in the cursed statue's eyes, pierce its gaze to purge the seal from the shrine. I'm still in the process of deciphering that one, so I don't suppose there's any harm in sharing it with you. That's my life in a nutshell. Days filled with researching shrines and nights spent studying ancient texts. That leaves no time to converse with passing strangers, so farewell. Alright, so the guy's kind of a weirdo, but he gives us a, uh, a quest here. And he's actually running to where that is located, but I already know where it's located, so yeah. we're just gonna go right ahead. If Epona knows what she's doing. I feel like I'm driving the Mako sometimes when I have a horse in this game. Except the Mako is much better with, you know, like, cliff sides than horses are. So, the Cursed Statue is over here in this incredibly creepy um, little area of the game. Holy crap, Epona, stop. Um, I actually think it's... I don't know which one it is. It's one of these. Either way, we can't really deal with it yet because it's morning. So we're going to start a fire. And we'll just wait. Hold some wood. Whoops. Uh, okay. Well, there's a silent stream in the mix there, but that's alright. Uh, we're going to hit the floor. Scare the fuck out of my horse. I'm sorry. Oh my god, no! No! Okay, she's alright. She's alright. She's still alive. They die. They do die in this game. But she's not dead, thankfully. So that's good. So we're gonna sit till night. It says when the cursed statue eyes shine. I think something at night. It's uh, it's downright creepy, as I said. I don't know if you have to use an arrow or if you can just hit it. Yeah, you need an arrow. Yeah, I don't know. That just scares the crap out of me. Oh, Epona is being. <laughs> Clip to the side of where the shrine has to come out of the ground. That's awkward. See, a fire scares the crap out of her, but this? Yeah, she's chill. She doesn't, she's just standing there. It's fine. It's not like horses are sensitive to what's behind them or anything. It's, it's chill. Alright. Um, and we can pick up the arrow that we shot at it. And here we go. So this is an example of a shrine quest. So you gotta put in your work for these ones. Uh, and I kind of hate this one, but here we go. So this is a trial of passage. Um, it's actually really good practice for the ouch, divine beasts in this game. Because of a, uh, because of how it rolls. You can make use of a variety of tools in this as well, of course, including stasis and magnesis. Again, depending on what you actually want to achieve. But we don't necessarily need to. If we can make this jump just right. There we go. So we're gonna go to stasis. And we're gonna hold this until it stops. Uh, actually, I guess we should go get that chest first. There's two chests to get in this one. I don't remember if either of them are actually worth the time it takes, but... There you go. One opal. And then we have one more chest, which is, uh... Where did it go? It's on... There we go, the top of that thing. So we're gonna hold 
like this for here for now until it becomes like down here we'll land and grab it and then we'll make the jump that we were gonna make earlier on it's gotta be pretty still though pretty flat or else it's not gonna work uh, there we go So you have a time limit with stasis, but that time limit doesn't count um, if you are opening a chest. So that's nice. My inventory is full. I don't even know if this was worth picking up. Oh, I guess it was. So again, stasis in real time would have run out by now, but... There it goes, finally. What we're doing is we're waiting for this platform here so we can stand on it and then jump off of it to get on top of those steps up there because that will let us get out finally not one of the harder shrines necessarily but definitely one of the more complicated ones in the game Our spear from earlier. So, the stairs that are coming around right now are what we're going to use to uh, climb up on, and they don't have to be perfectly in place. They can just kind of be so so, just enough for us to walk on. Uh, there we go. Perfect. Up we go. Okay, spirit order number three. So that's perfect. There is uh, another shrine in Hatino. Possibly one on the way. I can't actually remember. And uh, that'll give us our fourth spirit orb. And we will get another fifth of our stamina wheel. Just helps you get around a little bit faster. Okay. <laughs> Pona's all the way back here. Uh, come on. Can she walk around this? Oh no, maybe not. Watch as I've trapped her. Oh my god. Okay, good. There we go. Get out of here. Uh... And there's a Korok over here too, so... Oh my gosh. So, hardy radishes. Really easy to spot because they have giant purple flowers. Um, and just super useful to cook with. So always, always, always stop and grab those if you can because you cook them with meat. And then the meat just becomes so much... Uh, it just gives you a lot more health back. Alright, this might end up being the game I do all the Korok seeds on. Actually, I'm doing a lot better with finding them than I was in my previous ones, but if that's the case, it's not gonna be. Um, it's not all gonna be recorded. I just feel like that would be ridiculous. Is that another radish? Yeah, it is. Okay, and there's a dude on a horse we can talk to here. The ego do not show up on horses, so that's nice. Oh. Oh, we're right. Horses love carrots. It's true. So, because the ego drop rupees and bananas, uh, we're gonna fight this guy. This was the first ego I ran into in my first game, and I was like, "Oh, a girl! Like she's crying. I can help her." I want, I need, I need grilled salmon. And also, the hero's life! Again, like zero to a hundred. These guys are a wild fucking ride. So we're not gonna use a sledgehammer, we'll use a spear, because we need the reach while we're fighting these guys. 
It just kind of stops them from being able to do their stupid teleporty thing that they like to do all the time. Which is literally the biggest pain in the whole world. Um, and the sickles are nice to use too, so... Oops. They're a little more powerful compared to most of the weapons we've found so far, so it's worth it. Vicious sickles. Ride past Jute? Hoot? I don't know how to say his name. And there's a Tino, so it's definitely a, a quick ride over to the Tino village. But we're gonna go to the tower first, obviously. Um, and now that I see this, I realize I might have gone the wrong direction. We'll just have to take the long way there. That's fine. God, if only horses could, like, steer while they're running so fast. Okay. Uh, this might not actually be the way that I want. These are all just ruins. But there's a little cabin over here, so we'll check it out. Usually you can find treasure and... Kind of just like items. Yeah, so ten arrows. That's worth worth the trip in here. Um, breaking pots. It's Zelda. They had to have pots. I don't think they're allowed to not have pots that you can smash or pick up and throw. So they kept with tradition. And... There's some sort of setup here. I don't actually come down here in my first playthrough, so I don't recognize this. I was pretty scared of like everything when I first played. So I frequently went to just where I had to go. So I'm thinking uh, I don't know if we'll be able to climb this on this side. I think I missed where I was supposed to actually go up. It looks like it's target practice, like, for horseback riding. But there's a mini game with that later, which is literally hell. So I don't know if this is something else. Maybe it's a Korok. I'm unsure. Uh, at least we found a bunch of core. Sorry, or. Nothing amazing. And then there's rush rooms here. Which is nice, because as I mentioned in my first part, we're gonna need those. But I'm not sure we're gonna make it up this whole cliff here. Mm. Oh, maybe. Probably didn't have to move over for the restroom, but oh well, it's too late. Oh, what am I doing? So even one piece of the climber's bandana will make you climb faster. So suffice to say, it's worth it. There we go. We'll make it. We just can't do any jumping. Better, we better make it. Oh my god. I'll be so pissed if we can't stand on this ledge. We will fall and die. <laughs> yep, there's that. That's, that's... <sighs> I got too ambitious. I'm sorry, Link. There we go. That's the path that we wanted. So there's enemies along this path uh, that we can fight if we want to, but we also don't have to fight them. Yeah, it's kind of fun. Oh, 
Well. Oh, there we go. Good. I thought it all went off the cliff. Just killed some sort of a bird there. Hashtag whoops. So here's another moblin. You hit them right in their little snouty snout snout. Takes them out with two arrows. Which is pretty solid. And uh, their bats are... Well, that bat isn't that strong, to be honest. Oh, gosh. That's not what I wanted to do. So a lot of the towers are not this easy to get to. A lot of them um, definitely give you more of a challenge to get to. Which has its own pros and cons, of course. But this one is, a uh, user-friendly. You can pretty well ride right up to it. And then it's covered in thorns, which you can either just avoid or burn away. And because we like fire, we're gonna burn it away. So the flame blade sort of unlocks as it goes. That's strange. I thought that would work. Okay, we'll light a fire instead. Uh, we'll light a fire right here. that does the trick. There we go. That is more like it. Um, this sometimes will drop your frame rate a little bit. Which is kind of funny, but... Anyway, it'll all start lighting up around me, I'm sure. So there's a noticeable difference in climbing speed with just one item of the climber set on. When you have all three, it is incredible. like it would, but it doesn't. Now we have to try and make this ledge. Oh my god. No! Oh. This is so frustrating. Ah, Maybe we'll do Rito Village first. I want to... Uh, how are you get there? It's really... Ow. Is really nice for climbing towers. Gah. That's all I have to say about that. I was so close. Okay. Here we go. It's just because I got too ambitious. Tried to jump. Then I tried to glide, not take stamina. It just doesn't feel like it would. Go. Uh, can we see Hatino Village in the background now? Yeah, it's right behind the tower, I think. And there's a shrine you can see way out in the distance. Um, this area, I think it's actually called East Nekluda, not Hatino, is uh, is really fun to explore. Probably one of the more fun areas to explore in in the entire game, in my humble opinion. If we're able to, we're gonna try and bomb these. That didn't work. Hmm. Looks like we're gonna have to follow where the vines go. Just can't make it easy on us. Even though I set fire, I guess it just doesn't reach all the way up, so that's cool. That's cool too. Hmm. I think that's the one we want on this side. Yeah. 
Oh, sure it is. Sure, let's try this. I guess we can just go up here. our second or third I guess Shika Tower activated in game and that's gonna mark the end of this uh, second part playthrough in the next episode we'll be dealing with Hatino going back to Kakariko and the uh, and then starting our quest over to Zora's domain first and foremost so again uh, let me know if there's anything that I should be changing up anything you want to see specifically in game um, that I can work towards and I will do that <laughs>